This makes me feel like a spry 30 year old. Ooh, that's a hot mug guy. Hey guys, Jeremy here with my review of The Irishman. I think I have the stomach flu, been home for the last few days, feeling like garbage, but I was able to watch The Irishman in parts. This was the big movie of the year for me. This was Martin Scorsese returning to crime drama. Goodfellas and Casino in particular are some of my favorite crime movies ever. Casino being pretty much my favorite crime-related Scorsese film. Then we get The Irishman, which is three and a half hours long. Casino being just under three hours long. How can we go wrong? We've got Scorsese, we've got De Niro, we've got Joe freaking Pesci back, we've got Al Pacino, hopefully Robert De Niro and Al Pacino kind of erasing that whole Righteous Kill duo that they did. That was a horrible movie. We got Thelma Schoomaker as Martin Scorsese, bold and true and absolutely amazingly talented editor coming in to make sure this movie is coherent and well paced and amazingly edited as she always does and this movie's slow it's so slow but i believe that's because of how scorsese wants to tell this story we are being told this story from an old man who's at death's door and by saying that, we do get a story that has its parts. If anything, this movie would have been better broken up as a miniseries. Three parts, really. The beginning with young Robert De Niro kind of getting into the crime family. The second part with him becoming really good friends with Jimmy Hoffa. And then the third part with a fallout with Hoffa and just the end of his story. That's really how this should have been because this movie you can't watch it in one sitting. For those who have, I'm amazed. I had to take three breaks to watch this movie. I couldn't believe how much of this movie there is. The thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is how long certain shots are. There are some elements that could have been shortened down. There's these really high speed, uh, slow, slow motion scenes that I don't understand the point of them. I would have understood if there was narration going on, but sometimes there isn't even. And it's sometimes it's Robert De Niro just kind of mumbling like an old person. Now there are some scenes where his mumbling does make sense. There are certain elements where his age acting is fantastic to the role to developing the character. What we're seeing is this Irishman who was kind of a nobody eventually rose through the ranks of the Teamster Union and became one of the most notorious hitmen in the Philadelphia mob circuit and eventually was one of the biggest people in Jimmy Hoffa's life and was possibly a person who had a hand in what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. This is a great movie to watch for characters. Jimmy Hoffa played by Al Pacino is fantastic. It's great to see Al Pacino act so well again. Robert De Niro is pretty good when he's playing something from 50 to older. I honestly couldn't take it seriously when he was younger because when he was supposed to be 30, he looked like a 60 year old goblin. Soulless, white walker, like blue eyes that happened at several times were so disconcerting, so taking me out of the element that it made me think that he was a fucking vampire. I just don't understand why they didn't use younger actors. I understand you want to use this really cool de-aging technology. I understand you want to bring these three heavyweights back and want to show off how amazing these guys are. But sometimes it just doesn't work. There's a scene where Robert De Niro beats the crap out of this dude, but you can tell it's 70 year old. Actually, hang on. How old is Robert De Niro? I swear he's like 70 or 80. Okay, Google, how old is Robert De Niro? He's 76 years old, and when he beats the crap out of this dude, you can tell he's 76 because he's hitting him like an old man would. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, can't get too hard. I'll get my arthritis going. Oh, that slip desk is acting up. Oh. So, yeah, scenes that require these actors doing physical things didn't work so well because you could tell these guys were just old. What I did eventually realize after having watched the film and thought about it for quite a while, I thought about it for a couple of days, is that this movie is one of the best films in Scorsese's library in terms of showing just how crappy it is to have been in the mob. Goodfellas and Casino kind of show the highs of being in the mob. This movie never really shows that. It's always the dark side of the mob. It's always the dark elements. There are some funny elements, don't get me wrong, throughout the film. But this is really a depressing movie, and it gets even more depressing towards the end. Especially 
the final moments of Jimmy Hoffa. That is some of the most tense filmmaking I've seen in a while. I was glued to my seat watching this scene. I didn't say a word. I was just enthralled in it right up until the end, until we saw what happens with Hoffa, or at least what supposedly happened with Hoffa. There's a few people who have come forward saying that they've killed him, but this guy apparently said it on his deathbed that he did take out Hoffa and he confessed it to a private investigator who supposedly is supposed to be the person who's taking in the narrative in this film even though they don't really say it. I did enjoy just how bleak the end of his life is. His family hates him. The mob is gone. Everyone's dead except him. All he has left is this ring and the watch that were gifts to him that were so renowned to him and now they mean absolutely nothing to anyone else in the world. And it just shows just how pointless all the violence was. It shows how inconsequential everything that he's done in his life has added up to be. And I loved how it ended even though it took me a bit to realize that. So in the end, The Irishman is definitely not one of those very rewatchable Scorsese movies. I could watch Casino or Goodfellas any day. I could only watch this if I watched it in parts because this movie is a very slow burn. It is one of the slowest movies in Scorsese's catalog, which is odd because, again, of Thelma being a fantastic editor. I think she kept this in terms of pacing because, of course, that what Scorsese wanted. But I do believe it makes the film suffer in terms of its overall entertainment and its pacing value. But the movie's still good. It's just not a rewatchable movie. So in the end, I'm going to give The Irishman a 5 out of 7. I think it's a fantastic film. It was great to see Joe Pesci back in the role again. Everyone does a fantastic job in the acting department. I just feel that the story takes a little bit of time to get going. There are some pacing elements. And that de-aging technology, you should have just used younger actors. I don't know why they didn't do that. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.